What led to your departure after one night stand with WWE? We've talked about it so much that she see if we can give it to you in a nutshell. Uh, we were informed that we were coming right back after one night stand. They had angles ready to go with us. The team that we had helped the most down in o OVW, who was Eminem, had been brought up. That was our next angle. We were going to run with that for a long period of time. We were getting ready to sign a new contract. The contract was on the table. Both sides had come to an agreement. And then at the last second, they pulled it, they pulled it off the table. And they said, at this time, we don't think we want to renew your contract. But we want to leave the window open for down the road. Did they give you a reason why they didn't want to? Um, did they give us a reason why? Yeah, we had nothing creative for us. Yeah, they had nothing creative for us. But meanwhile, Creative had contacted us three weeks before One Night Stand and told us what our next six-month angle was. We know the exact person who stabbed us in the back up there. We know exactly who he is. We know exactly how he went about it. Because we have people on the end. That, that that knew what went down. And Vince, in his heart, knows that John fucked us. That's okay. Because you know what? It's business. And karma is a bitch. It's not anybody else's business, really. I know we're, we're, we're trying, we, you know, the whole purpose of this interview is to get to get in, you know, in depth onto what happened, but it's too deep into what went on. Some he cut our balls off. We know what happened. You know what though? If you're gonna cut my balls off, do it to my face. Don't do it over the phone at 9:30 at night on a Tuesday. That is a cunt with a capital C. Do you think that if you guys would have stayed, if you were able to negotiate directly with uh, Jr. or Vince? No doubt. We'd still be there. No doubt. Still be there. We had we had corresponded with Vince. I had emailed Vince. Me and Vince set up an appointment to come in and ink the deal and talk about creative because Vince had Vince had compared us to Sean at the time and said, "I have to use you sp uh, sporadically, like I use Sean, because you've already done so much, and I have nobody for you to do it with anymore." So this is what I'm mapping out for you. He says, "I need you to take about take less money." A little bit of less money because you're not going to be working that crazy 300 day year schedule anymore because I'm going to use you in this year. We were ready to sign the deal. We took less money. We weren't proud to take less money, but we knew it was the right thing to do to help the company at the time. We were ready to do it. Somebody got in Vince's ear and told him something different. And there was only one other pre person we were dealing with at the time. So there's no way to contact Vince, I guess, after the, the negotiations fell through and say, hey, you still want us? Or? I did. I contacted Vince afterwards and said, on behalf of, me, on behalf of me and Yvonne, thank you very much for the past six years. Thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for helping us make the money that we made. Thank you for helping us realize our dream as young guys to be pro wrestlers for the company that your dad started. Everything was great. Thank you. We just wish we could have seen you and shook your hand face to face like men do. Vince wrote back and said, no hard feelings. The window is open. The door is open. And in wrestling, you never say never. Anything that can happen. And there are people out there who have fucked Vince McMahon over 10 bajillion times worse. Look, we didn't even fuck him over, so it doesn't really make sense. We have fucked him over 10 bajillion times worse. But when it comes to business, Vince just doesn't care. Right. 